what's good y'all it's your boy ross back out again with another video so we're gonna check out 10 most unprofessional moments in wwe history um this should be a very interesting one it, it happens it happens not even just in wwe in a lot of jobs you know certain things or you know may come to the forefront and um people end up acting unprofessionally and it's it's definitely happened a lot in wrestling egos get involved people feeling like they deserve more than maybe uh than you know what uh vince or tony khan or whoever's willing to pay out or feel like they're worth to their company and you know sometimes people end up walking out saying some things even sometimes some backstage brawls happen so we're gonna check out some of these unprofessional moments in wwe history appreciate all love support let's get right into this one man the professionalism of pro wrestlers in WWE is come into question on numerous occasions. Of course. Wrestlers are prone to acting in a way which is completely unprofessional, and this can range from poor behavior to outright walking out of the company due to creative and personal differences. Yep. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 of the most unprofessional moments in WWE history. Make sure y'all subscribe to WrestleMania if you Mark haven't already. Holly goes too far. One of the more infamous moments of the third season of Tough Enough revolved around Hardcore oh, Holly. Oh yeah, I've Holly has heard about had this story. Holly has a reputation story. for taking wrestlers way too seriously, and this was on full display with a completely reckless act. During one of the episodes, Holly, who was a trainer on the show, decided to lay into contestant yep. Matt Capitelli with legitimate kicks and punches. Capitelli was left with cuts and bruises, and it was even claimed that he was even knocked out following his exchange with Holly. Jeez, Hardcore bro. Holly would later claim that he needed to teach Capitelli a lesson in respect, but Holly went too far, and this act completely derailed any support he had from the fan base. Former head of talent relations yeah. for WWE Jim Ross would reflect on the unfortunate incident during his episode of Grill and JR, and this is what the legendary commentator had to say. It was uh, with a lot of people. The bully thing was not selling well mm -mm. it should never sell well bully uh, there's no place for it so and people shouldn't teach your kids to be bullies so bob was a bully on those occasions but i don't know that that was 100 bob's uh call i think john gabork was producing those shows at he that was time. that's right and you know and, and gabork got orders from headquarters from kevin dunn and who got them from vince because dunn and uh, gabork are you know have been friends for years baltimore friends it, it was he carried out his orders and and again people are gonna say well that doesn't make it right that doesn't make it right jr well i'm not saying it makes it right i'm saying this is how it is this is how it was so uh that's kind of where i see that conrad it was a uh, bob got out of step there and he's lucky he didn't get fired number nine yeah no nah, that 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 wasn't cool bad uh, you trying to teach respect or whatever the case may be, cool. But he's out there trying to legitimately beat the crap out of him. And damn near did. Like, nah, it's not cool. And we've heard, I've seen clips and heard stories about Bob Holly and, and how he kind of was a bully backstage. And especially to newer guys, like, that's, it's not cool, bro. It's not. The Ultimate Warrior holds up Vince McMahon. Heard about this it's one well too. documented that the Ultimate Warrior had attitude problems during his numerous WWE runs. In July of 91, Warrior sent a letter to Vince McMahon stating he wanted $550,000 uh -huh. for performing at WrestleMania 7, a guaranteed number of working days, and a higher percentage of merch sales. Warrior would also add that the figure was fair and that he meant more to the show than Hulk Hogan. McMahon had no choice but to accept, because Warrior was set to be in the main event of the annual Damn, SummerSlam event. Bro. But following the show, Warrior handed a letter to say that he was suspended effective immediately. In the letter, McMahon stated, You threatened to stay at home thereby not appearing at Titan's major summer pay-per-view event, SummerSlam. I had no choice but to accede to your exorbitant demands. This was a serious mistake on your part. Damn, Warrior's man. 1996 run was also problematic as he began uh -huh. to no-show live events, and this led to WWE terminating Warrior's contract. Yep. Warrior would initially claim that his father passed away, but McMahon would claim that Warrior was never close to his father. Warrior would then later state that there was a breach of contract on the part of McMahon, which led him to no-showing numerous events. Number eight, Sasha Banks, and that was that was also handled poorly too. Like, <laughs> I I can't really 
expound on it because a lot of that's obviously before my time and when I was a little kid, like very little. So I can't really too much expound on it. But just from the reports and different accounts, seeing like Ultimate Warrior, he was like, yo, bro, I'm I'm here for this money, pay up. And granted, maybe Vince did, you know, kind of mess him over in some of the, the appearances and maybe the payment wasn't all correct at the time. But at the same time, my man was like, yo, man, Give me that half a million or I'm not showing up. That's wild. <laughs> Holy. <laughs> Naomi walk out of WWE. A seemingly out of nowhere, news broke in May of 2022 that Sasha Banks and Naomi had walked out of WWE. Yep. Banks and Naomi were reigning women's tag team champions and due to creative differences, they decided to walk out before a Raw show and haven't been seen since. Nope. It was reported that WWE wanted to plant the seeds to split the duo up and they were going to advance towards a Naomi vs Bianca Belair and a Banks vs Ronda Rousey program. Banks and Naomi believed that WWE were mistreating and not respecting the women's tag titles and that's ultimately why they decided to leave. A few hours after the walkout, WWE went into damage control yeah. and issued an official statement. When Sasha Banks and Naomi arrived at the arena this afternoon, they were informed of their participation in the main event of tonight's Monday Night Raw. During the broadcast, they walked into WWE head of talent relations John Laurinaitis' office with their suitcases in hand, placed their tag team championship belts on the desk and walked out. They claimed that they weren't respected enough as tag team champions and even though they had 8 hours to rehearse and construct their match, they claimed that they were uncomfortable in the ring with two of their opponents even though they had had matches with those individuals in the past with no consequences. Monday Night Raw is a scripted live TV show whose characters are expected to perform the requirements of their contract. We regret we were unable to deliver as advertised tonight's main event. Number seven, yep. Charlotte Blair. They definitely outed them <laughs> on live television. That one, both sides play a, a part into it. Those tag titles don't mean a goddamn thing. They don't even mean nothing now. Even with Sasha and Naomi been, have been going for so long, they still don't mean nothing, y'all. They needed to be scrapped anyway. I get what Sasha and Naomi was trying to do, but WWE didn't care about that. They didn't. Now, they do take some fault into it because, once again, you doing a no-show saying, fuck it. I get it, your frustrations. Uh, even the legend himself, Stone Cold, said he regret doing how he did things when he no-showed uh, um, for Vince McMahon. I believe it was supposed to be a Monday Night Raw. He was supposed to be facing Brock Lesnar. He even regret doing that years, years later. So I do feel like they definitely mishandled it at the time, but I can't get mad at them for how they felt because of their personal gripes and issues they they had been having with management and the direction of the titles. I do think if um, Triple H was in, had more creative control, I think he would have been able to ease Sasha and Naomi's worries just a little bit more, and they probably would have stayed. But um, it's just one of those type of things where both sides play a part into it, but it, it's still... If you want to be technical, it was unprofessional of them to leave the situation. But, you know, anybody that does that is still unprofessional, whether Brock do it or whatever the case may be. Because I think Brock was threatening to do the same thing, like, right after that. So, once I think they found out Vince had left or Vince was leaving the company or whatever, Brock was going to do the same thing. He's like, he wasn't about to no-show, whatever the case may have been. But it's it's still unprofessional, no matter how you look at it, whether it's justified or not drops the women's title. In October of 2021, WWE booked a bizarre segment in which Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch exchanged their respective titles. Flair was reigning Raw Women's Champion, whilst Lynch was the reigning SmackDown Women's Champion, and due to both women being drafted to alternative shows, a title swap was ordered. As the exchange was about to go down, this Flair is awkwardly really dropped awkward, her Raw bro. Women's title on the ground. This made the title look worthless, yeah. and Flair's professionalism was called into question. Yeah, that was... It later surfaced that Lynch and Flair had a confrontation backstage following the incident, and this resulted in accusations being directed towards Flair that she dropped the title on purpose to make Lynch look inferior. According to Flair during an appearance on Broken Skull Sessions, she dropped the title accidentally. I wish I could sit here and tell you that I did it on purpose, but if people need me to be that bad guy, I'll be that bad guy. Things happen on screen. I would never go on a scripted television show and purposely do something on purpose. It was accidental. Number six, Shawn Michaels gets... Well, I mean, if it was accidental, you could have picked it up, but she didn't pick it up. 
So that's why Alicia was like, what the fuck? Like you see it the way it looked, it looked it looked like Flair didn't give a damn. Like you pick it up. Like that whole segment was just awkward and not in a good way. It made those championships look like absolute jokes because they just throwing them on the ground. It it did not look good. That was really weird. It's Vader's push cancelled. In modern times, Shawn Michaels is one of the most beloved wrestlers ever. Yeah. That wasn't always the case. No. During the mid to late 90s, HBK had a rotten reputation backstage. Michaels was seen as one, if not the most unprofessional wrestler in the entire locker room. Yeah. It would often be difficult to work with when this was on full display when he wrestled Vader at SummerSlam in 1996. This was the infamous match in which Vader uh -huh. messed up a spot and instead of acting with professionalism, HBK kicks Vader yep. right in the face. He would mm -hmm. later use his backstage influence to get Vader's push squashed, and due to him being one of Vince McMahon's biggest stars, McMahon took everything HBK said as gospel. Yep. He did a number of things during this time period that crossed a line, and a full documented video could be published outlining just how unprofessional the WWE Hall of Famer was during the 90s. Number and this is one of those things where people want to sit up there and they, they ridicule CM Punk and, and all this other stuff. Not realizing wrestling has always had individuals that weren't at their best, that weren't liked damn near by a lot of people in the back. And HBK, Shawn Michaels is, he's one of them. He's at the top of that list. People did not like him. He was an asshole. Y'all thought what CM Punk was? Oh, no. HBK, if he was in today's time, he would have got canceled. Because he was, he didn't give a damn. And granted, you you grow and you learn. So that's why when people make those, you know, go, you know, go at CM Punk so hard because of his backstage stuff. Whether you agree with him or not, it's always happened. It's not saying I'm not excusing some of his actions, but can we not act that sit up here and act like wrestling had not always had that? Like it's it's part of wrestling. Egos get into the mix. It's just being able to learn and grow from those situations. So HBK definitely deserves to be on this list. But five, Shawn Michaels' old self resurfaces. Here we go. <laughs> Speaking of Shawn Michaels, at SummerSlam in 2005, he delivered one of the most comical yeah. yet unprofessional performances of his career. HBK would wrestle Hulk Hogan in a dream match, and they had a bold decision to drastically oversell everything Hogan did. Hilarious. The reason HBK did this was because Hogan had backed out of doing several matches with him, meaning that Hogan was going to get to win at SummerSlam, and he was never going to return the favor of putting HBK over. Jim Ross, who was on commentary for the match, discussed HBK's overselling, and this is what he had to say. I thought Sean took some liberties. I thought Sean was a little light-hearted and being a wise-ass at times in that situation. Uh -huh. But Michael's ego is such that he cannot have a bad match that reflects negatively on him, and that certainly would have. I thought the match was pretty damn good, quite frankly. Number four, John Cena. Oh, it was definitely a good match. He was just overselling like crazy. Cena gets a match finish changed. The professionalism of John Cena was called into question in the summer of 2010. Cena led Team WWE to take on Team oh Nexus at SummerSlam, boy, and the intended yeah. finish of the match was supposed to see Team Nexus win. This would have presented Nexus as the credible threat in WWE and would have hopefully created some new main event stars. But they, Cena made the bold and nope. brazen decision to go to Vince McMahon before SummerSlam to get the match finish changed. This was a terrible misjudgment on behalf yeah. of Cena, as it just portrayed him as completely egocentric. Everyone knew that Cena had made the wrong call, but Cena was WWE's top guy, so yeah. he had a ton of influence. In recent years, he's spoken out about how he regrets in getting the match finish changed, but it still doesn't make up for his blatant act of selfishness and unprofessionalism. Number three, yep. Jay and Even C Cena had to admit he was wrong, and he was wrong, because it makes no sense for them to lose. It made no sense for them to lose. JBL legitimately punches the blue meanie. Yeah, throughout his seen career, this one. JBL has had a number of accusations thrown his way regarding his conduct. Numerous ex WWE stars have labeled JBL as a bully, and we got to see JBL's antics play out live on pay per view in 2005. During the brawl between WWE and ECW's roster at the One Night Stand event, JBL targeted the Blue Meanie in a brawl. Meanie would appear with a bloodied face, and it was clear that yeah. JBL had maliciously hurt the ECW star. According to Meanie, he believed that JBL wanted to hurt him for criticizing him online. However, JBL said that he was giving Meanie a retaliation blow during the brawl, yet it was rather suspicious that JBL had no cuts on his face yeah. whatsoever. Number two, Randy Orton. But they, they end up getting a receipt, though. So we've seen a video uh, of wrestlers getting a receipt 
Oh, JBL, he got his receipt. Snaps. Pro wrestling is incredibly difficult to master. Things can go easily wrong. Yeah. When things go wrong in a match, it's important that wrestlers remain cool and try to get it together. Unfortunately, in early 2010, Randy Orton expressed blatant unprofessionalism during a triple threat match with Kofi Kingston and yep. John Cena. During the end of the match, Kingston was supposed to be pinned following a punk kick from Orton, but Kingston rose to his feet, meaning that Orton wasn't able to execute the dreaded kick. Mm -hmm. An outraged Orton then hit an RKO and he yelled, Kingston! Orton's reaction was completely uncalled for. Whilst yeah. Orton's reaction was drastic and no doubt unprofessional, he wasn't remotely reprimanded. Instead, WWE lost faith in Kingston and he would be moved drastically down the card. Yep, once that happened, it was over. His, his push was done. And number one, Stone Cold Steve Austin walks out. Wrestlers walking out of WWE due to creative differences isn't exactly a rare occurrence. Nope. It's happened half a dozen times. I'm surprised he didn't put CM Punk on this list. I mean, I guess it's, you know, this was filmed before CM Punk came back to WWE, so it would have been an obvious thing, uh, you know, him walking out and not, not showing up to WWE anymore after, uh, you know, his issues with Vince and stuff like that. But I guess the number one spot should be Stone Cold because that was one of the biggest things that had happened at that point stone cold even though he wasn't really wrestling full time like that it's still stone cold and he said fuck it i'm not showing up <laughs> times throughout wwe history and whilst each case is different arguably the most notable was when stone cold steve austin walked out of wwe in 2002 yep. austin was having a weird 2002 as he was being booked in meaningless feuds and he was not being presented as the absolute megastar that he was then when Austin was booked to lose to Brock Lesnar in a King of the Ring qualifier on Raw, Austin said no thank you and decided yeah. to not show up for the match. Vince McMahon and even JR would publicly berate Austin for his unprofessionalism, whereas fans were split on Austin's decision. Yeah. The popular discourse at the time was that Austin should have shown up for work, but Austin's logic that a huge match such as he and Lesnar should have been built up massively. Austin himself later in years has outright stated that he regrets how he handled uh -huh. the situation, which ultimately deserves a ton of respect. They have it folks. Yeah. Ten of and and I remember that. And it's one of those type of things where it's like, you know what? He was unprofessional at that moment. And I love Stone Cold Steve Austin. He was my favorite wrestler. He is my favorite wrestler of all time. So I get it. And I understand his point. If that's truly his point that he wanted to to make that. No, this should be a big match. I shouldn't be. I don't have a problem losing, but I shouldn't be losing in a qualifying match, which. I totally agree. You don't put that match. Stone Cold and, the, and Brock, you don't put that. Even back then, Brock being as you know young as he was at the time, you know, you knew that was the guy that they were going with. You don't put that match as a qualifying match on a random Monday Night Raw episode. No, that's a pay-per-view quality match at least. So I understand that. And probably it was... He, I believe he had said he was just kind of frustrated with where the booking was going. He wasn't liking the booking direction. Hell, they weren't really booking him in anything noticeable as well. So it, it was a, it was a combination of things where he said, "Fuck it, I'm not coming back." Still unprofessional for him to do said thing. But at the end of the day, man, you know he he admitted that he was wrong and he wish he you know he could you know uh, you know if he had a chance to do things over i'm sure he would have did things differently as he has said before so comment down below let me know some other unprofessional moments in wrestling history i know there's going to be some cm punk stuff in there uh let me know if they weren't on this list already because there's been a lot of unprofessional moments um uh in wwe history and in wrestling history hell you can put hulk hogan and what happened with wcw you can also put uh vince russo in that situation and he was uh the integral part of the death of wcw and how unprofessional he was with some of the stuff that he was doing and and how he was booking himself and and just the way he was running backstage business you could put a lot of people even if they weren't wrestlers you know managers you know creative people in creative you know what I'm saying you could put a lot of people in this category of unprofessionalism in wrestling but i appreciate all the love and support you guys share on our channel road to 150k and i'm still here to be the youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking with me see you on the next one peace